I am welcome to Faith and Victory Church Wednesday night Bible study. So glad to have you with us tonight. Uh, I just want to tell you that God is good. Jesus is Lord and you are living in victory through him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So glad that you could join us tonight as we continue on our Wednesday night teaching of faith foundations. Hallelujah. Faith foundations. And we talked about last week how that four times in scripture, um, the word of God says in, in just very slightly varying uh, terms, um, but the just shall live by faith. Or when, actually, one translation says, uh, my, the, my righteous ones shall live by faith. And so we talked about the importance of that we are to live by faith, that if it's something that God says we live by, and it is the only thing that it says we live by. It doesn't say we live by love. It doesn't say that we uh, live by grace. It doesn't say that we live by uh, works. It says we live by faith. Not that uh, the other things, not that grace and not that love are, are invaluable or minor subjects in the Bible, but it does put an emphasis on the lifestyle of faith that we need, we need to adhere to and understand. It does play a central role. Now, that did not say the central role, but it plays a central role in our walk as a believer. <clears throat> so um, let's move on tonight from beginning that laying of foundation. Let's move into what is faith? What is faith? Hallelujah. And um, we can go to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hebrew, uh, faith comes out of a, a root Greek word, pisces, P-I-S-T-I-S, -I -S, uh, meaning to believe, an adherence. And so uh, it is a believing. It is, a, you know, the, the um, verb would be to uh, believing. Um, the now would be belief. And <clears throat> we are called to live by faith. Looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Moffat's translation states it this way. It says, now faith means that we are confident of what we hope for, convinced of what we do not see. Another translation says, faith is giving substance to things hoped for. And even another Faith is the warranty deed that the thing for which we have finally hoped is at last ours. And so these are like four different translations um, from this verse. I read to you initially out of the King James. Faith is the warranty deed. Another, uh, another um, translation says the title deed. The, uh, as we said, the warranty deed. Uh, one says the guarantee the things we hope for in the evidence of things not seen. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of people who say, uh, you know, um, is God going to do such and such for you? And they say, well, I sure hope so. Well, see, they're, they're, not, they're not quite there yet. They're halfway there. They got the hope. And uh, hope is, a, um, is an expectancy. Bible hope is an expectancy that um, God can Faith takes it, move it from God can to God will. Amen. God take, takes it from God can to God will. Hope comes, hope springs out of reading the scripture. When you look in the Bible and um, God, the Bible says, God's not willing that any should perish. If you're a sinner and you're lost, um, you see that a hope arises that you could be saved. But what faith does is it takes that hope and makes it a guarantee and pulls it into the realm of reality and instead of just a hope, not, not a twinkle, twinkle, little star wishing it would be true. Um, hope isn't. But, you know, it, 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 God said it. It can be true. I mean, it can be for me. For hope leads to that says because God said it, it is true and lays hold of it and pulls it into the realm of reality. Hallelujah. And so, the, the faith that we use in the Bible, you know, but God created the worlds by faith. He spoke it. It became the past. The law of Genesis, God said, and there was, and God said, and there was, and God said, and there was. When you, when you read creation, that, that is a law of Genesis. 
uh, God spoke it and it came to pass. God obeyed, it obeyed God. And then we read in the New Testament, it says, and the, uh, God created all things by faith. And he upholds all things by the word of his power. So we know faith does work in the vein of speaking <coughs> what we believe. We call that the power of confession or positive confession. Uh, more accurately, biblical confession. You confess what the Bible says, what the word of God says, and you come into agreement with it. So faith means that we are confident of that which we hope for. We hope the scripture is true. Faith says, I'm confident that it's true. Hallelujah. And I'm convinced of the things we do not see. Now that's an interesting statement there. Convinced of the things we do not see. Most people say, I won't believe unless I see it. That's not faith. If you've got to see it to believe it, you're, you're, there's no faith there. It takes me absolutely no faith to believe I've got a cell phone in my hand. My senses tell me it's in my hand. Hello? Um, the Word of God says uh, that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, faith doesn't have to see it's your salvation. It believes you receive it. Hallelujah. And so the faith we're talking about is a supernatural faith. It's not gain. We don't gain this faith by our senses. Um, one minister said, faith is grasping the unrealities of hope and bringing them into the re realm of reality. He also said faith in God is simply faith in his word. <clears throat> faith in his word. Why? Because God and his word are one. God's word, the Bible, it's his word. He, he honors his word. And then um, hope will always put the answer into the future. It says, I'll have it someday or sometime. Faith says, I have it now. Even though you don't see it. Hallelujah. Um, John Wesley, the great preacher from England, him, him and George Wesley. Um, I believe that John Wesley started the... Did he start the Wesleyan or Methodist? And then the other one, start, George started the... The Wesleyan Church and the and the um, United, the Methodist Church were started by the Wesley brothers. I forget which one started which. Okay, they came from England and came here. And uh, but John Wesley was, uh, once said, "The devil has given the church a substitute for faith, one that looks and sounds so much like faith that few people can tell the difference. The substitute is called mental assent. Now, mental assent is." agreeing with your head well yeah that's true so you got people who believe yeah jesus is jesus is the son of god they'll assent to that in their mind but they never receive them as their lord they don't exercise faith and receive him as lord mental sense says that i know the word is true but for some reason i can't get it faith says i know the word is true and i have it now you have to believe before you will see Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Let's look, if you will, to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, <clears throat> which has one of the greatest passages on faith in the Bible. It brings clarity to its meaning, how it operates. And um, to bring you up to date here in this passage as, as uh, where, where, why Jesus <clears throat> even uh, gave this discourse on faith. Um, they had been uh, in town and um, hallelujah and um, came out and there we go. Okay. And verse 11 says, um, and Jesus entered into the Jerusalem and into the temple. When he looked around upon all things, and now uh, even time has come, he went to, unto Bethany with the twelve. So he was in town in the temple, then went back out. 
Okay. And then the morrow when they came from uh, Bethany, they were hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came happily. He might find anything thereon. For when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the fig was not yet. Now, apparently they, they, they tell us that in this region, when a fig tree um, bears its leaves, it has figs with it. And so, you know, Jesus growing up in that region knew that that fig tree was supposed to have tr figs for the time the figs was not yet. So it was out of season, but it had its leaves. So um, he came if happily there might be, um, or by chance, there might be figs on that tree since it had leaves. They were hungry, going to go get some figs and eat. <clears throat> but when he got there, there's nothing, just leaves. And Jesus answered, see, he answered. He talked to the fig tree. The fig tree said, because I got these, I got figs. Jesus gets there. So it's actually broadcasting. I have figs. He gets there and then goes, there's no figs. So he answered the tree because it, it lied. <laughs> oh, that guess that's all you can say. It lied to him. And he said, he said unto it, no man eat fruit of the, the hereafter forever. <clears throat> and the disciples heard it. Let me say there is no such thing. I know we do this in church. I grew up in church hearing this. I've taught the people and they earnestly say this and so forth. Um, silent prayer. There's no such thing. The Greek word for pray is ateo. A-I-T-E-O. It also means, or another, you know, it's, it's got, some, you know, Ask. You verbalize. Okay? There's no such thing as silent prayer. Prayer is communicating. Now, if you're just thinking about something, you're thinking about it. That's not even meditating. The word meditate means to mutter. Again, verbalizing. Okay? So, but it's important here. And it's interesting that, the, that God took the time to simply have this phrase added, and the disciples heard it. He inspired the writer to put that there, and the disciples heard it. Why? Because he knew 2,000 years later we'd have people running around talking about silent prayer. And he knows the end from the beginning, and so he settled the question before it ever happened. Well, why do people come up with that stuff? Because they don't read their Bibles. And they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple, began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them and sold doves. Now, apparently the night before, the uh, day before he had gone in and he didn't like what he saw, so he came back and ran them out. Now, I mean, real quick, I remember one time we had, we had a book table in our church and, you know, we, we, were, we, we would sell um, materials, you know, books and Bibles and you know, study aids and so forth. And somebody came in, you got a book you're selling in the temple. You're, I mean, they went off like, you know, they thought they were Jesus. Jesus ran them out, had nothing to do with the fact that they were selling this stuff. It was the means by which they were doing it. They were, they were getting over on the people. Um, church history tells us that the, um, the, the priest had set up a, temple marketplace and as the people came in and came to the temple to bring their spotless lamb that was offered to God that had to be inspected by the priest and the priest would inspect it and then say no nope, that's got a spot on it but you could but you don't have to go right back home you can buy one right over here in the temple marketplace and they would sell them another one and take the one they had and stick it in the corral and they were they were basically financially raping the people they were abusing their position had they, because the people had to have spotless lambs, spotless doves. They had to have these things that were flawless and they had the gig and they had to say so. And so they set up a money-making operation where the people had no choice but to buy what they said. Okay. And um, verse 16, he would not suffer or allow that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Uh, he was hot. Because, you know, there's one thing that God doesn't put up with is misusing his people by the leaders or those set in position of leadership over his people. 
He he won't he, he will he will not endure it but for so long. And he taught, saying to them, It is not written my is it not written? My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, and you've made it a den of thieves. They're stealing from the people. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when evening was come, he went out of the city. Okay. So kind of set, setting up Mark eleven twenty two 22 here. And in the morning, uh, and, and he was coming, they went out and said, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now this, this phrase, and in the morning, can actually be uh, after a certain period of time. Now it could be literally the next morning. It could be two, three weeks later. Um, that phraseology in the Greek doesn't necessarily denote the very next 24-hour morning. Okay. Um, and um, Peter calling to remembrance. Now, so they pass, you know, they pass by and there uh, it's dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance said, Master, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus took the pious position of grandeur and said, I am the Son of God and everything must obey me. Not. That's not what he did. He answered Peter and said this, have faith in God. Literally, have the faith of God or the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, so now this, this moves it from simply the Son of God can do this to whosoever. Jesus did that, not me. Not the name it, claim it, frame it, pastor, preacher, not the faith bunch, not those word of faith people. Jesus did this. He's the one that said that whosoever. And so notice, as we read this, he never addresses directly Peter saying the fig tree withered away. He takes it as an opportunity for a um, faith lesson using the symbolism and creating a teaching on faith. And he says, verily, uh, solemnly, I solemnly swear. I give a solemn oath. I say unto you that whosoever shall say, you need to underline that, whosoever shall say. Now I want you to look at, you know, uh, look in the mirror, point your finger at yourself, uh, whatever you need to do, and say, I am a whosoever. Come on. I am a whosoever. Because Jesus said that whosoever. That makes that qualifies you. Come on now. That makes you qualified because he qualified you. That whosoever shall say. Notice that the whosoever has something he has to do. He has he shall say. Has to speak. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now Jesus is teaching us how it works, how it works shall say unto this mountain. Now, in this, the, the, the word mountain is not, listen, we, we, we try to uh, interpret Bible. We want to first literally interpret. But then, if literal interpretation doesn't work, then it becomes symbolic. Okay. The mountain is not talking about going out to Everest and putting it in the ocean. It's not what he's talking about. He's talking about what is a seemingly insurmountable situation or object. You can speak to it. Okay? So, uh, I say unto you, the whosoever shall say unto this mountain, or this seemingly immovable or insurmountable object or, or um, situation, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. You're telling it to get out of the way. You're speaking to the circumstance. The whosoever can speak to the circumstance. 
The circumstance of the fig tree said, I got figs. Didn't have figs. Jesus spoke to that circumstance and cursed it and it died. You won't do that again. You won't lie like that again. Hello. Um, listen to this. Be cast into the sea. Be there removed by the cast into the sea. So he spoke something specific. And, so you got to speak and, speak and. Amen. Shall not doubt in his heart. Not your head. But shall believe that the things <clears throat> which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now look here, let's look at this a little bit. <clears throat> First of all, the whosoever means, now you raise your hand and say, I'm a whosoever. Now say this, whosoever means I qualify. All right, now, now say this, whosoever means Jesus was talking to me. See, Jesus was telling you that you can speak to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And if you shall not doubt in your heart, glory to God, amen, but shall believe that the things which you say shall come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. So the whosoever gets whatsoever when he says it and believes it in his heart. Amen? Well, real quickly, hold your plate, just hold your finger right here and run over to Romans, the eighth chapter. I said Romans, Romans 10, <clears throat> verse 8. Okay, then you got your place in Mark 11. We're going to go right back there. Romans 8, I mean 10, verse 8. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. Now, I can see Mark eleven twenty three 23 all in this. Amen. Because <clears throat> Mark eleven twenty three, 23, Jesus said that if you'll say it and believe it in your heart, it'll come to pass. So we're seeing it, and it's the word of faith. Paul says, this is the word of faith which we preach. That if you'll confess Jesus as Lord... And believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. Amen? For with the heart, man believeth. And with the mouth, confession is made. Now, run back over to Mark. Jesus said that whosoever shall say. What? With your mouth. You say with your mouth. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt where? In your heart. You believe in your heart. But shall believe. Where? In your heart. That the things which you say shall come to pass. You'll have whatsoever you say. Amen. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> as we look at this, we're seeing Jesus giving a discourse on faith. He goes on the next verse and says this, Therefore I say unto you, that what, th what things soever ye desire, when you pray, again, a, a T -O, a -I -T -E -O, when you ask, Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So he, he, he takes this, this fig tree situation, sets up a, um, oh gosh, object, a, a object lesson with the, with the fig tree, establishes it, and then comes back when it happens. They go, it died. And Jesus says, okay, now I got the opportunity to teach them through that, through that object lesson about faith. And he, he says, if you're a whosoever, you say, you believe it, you'll have it. And then he comes back and, and condenses it down in verse 24 and says, therefore, because of this, because if you will speak to it and believe in your heart, you'll have it, that when you pray, when you ask God, 
when you speak what the word says, believe you have it and you shall have it or them. So he establishes a spiritual law that faith works in the vein of believing what God said in his word. Now, why do you say that? Because Romans 10, 17 goes on and says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And so we always tell people, we always tell people, <clears throat> well, I'm believing God for a, a this and I'm, then you go find scripture that supports that. Amen. And I don't mean some, I mean, you find you two, three scriptures that every word out of about the two or three witnesses that every word be established. You find Bible that will support what you're believing God for. Don't come to me and tell me you're believing for somebody else's wife. That's not, that's not faith. Hello. Well, the Bible says I can have what I say. Now, you see, this is why we have to take the whole Bible in context. <clears throat> when Jesus said, what things shall ever ye desire when you pray, believe, it doesn't mean you can desire somebody else's wife. He dealt with that. To look on another woman, to lust after her, is to commit adultery in your heart. Amen. So the parameters are going to have to be that the what things are things that the word of God promises you because faith comes by hearing the word of God. We get some yo-yos out there. I mean, we get some looney tunes out there. Amen. And they start using what they call their faith. And they're, they're trying to use it to manipulate situations that God's word doesn't promise them. Amen. And, uh, you know, maybe I upset people when I say that. Oh, well, they'll get over it. If not, they're going to have a hard way. They're going to have a, as we used to say down east, a hard road to hoe. Amen. Janie's uncle used to, um, he didn't, in his garden, he used a tractor to plow the garden. Not, not, not a mule and not a hoe to get it started. He, there, I went and picked stuff in at one time when, when um, we were dating before we got married. That was a long row. I mean, you know, if, if we were had cell phones today, you'd have to have a cell phone to talk to somebody at the other end. And hoeing, we got used to going to the garden with your, with your hoe, your garden hoe, and you clean out the grass and the weeds that tried to grow up there because you wanted to grow, you know, didn't want them to suck the life and up out of the soil and the nutrients out of the soil, you wanted it to go into the garden stuff. So you had to go hoe the row. And so we like to say that's a long road, a tough row or a long road to hoe. And if you're not going to do, do it God's way, the way God's word says, it, it's going to be a long road to hoe. It's going to be a tough road to hoe. Are you here? You're going home. Do I, do I have some of y'all here? I can sell some of y'all here. All right. Glory to God. And um, no, faith, there's a parameter on this subject matter. You know? You can have what you say as long as what you say lines up with the word of God. Now, I heard somebody say one time, you know, if the Bible wasn't true, if Jesus wasn't Lord and all, none of this was uh, real, I'd still live this way because it works. Well, the fact is it won't work if God isn't true, real, Jesus isn't alive, and the Bible isn't true. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I know what they were trying to say, but you can't abdicate God from his word. You can't do it. Faith works in line with the word of God. It is birthed out of the word of God. So when we say you can have what you say and that what things shall ye desire, well, the Bible says this. See, there's ungodly desire and there's godly desire. He gives, us the, he gives us the desires of our heart. Now, you can take that twofold. You can mean that we have a desire, he'll give it to us. But it also can be mean that he's the one who puts the desire in your heart. 
We want godly desires. We don't want worldly desires. We want to honor God. And so, um, and having been uh, this year, 40 years in ministry, I mean, this month, this month, I was ordained in May of uh, 1981. <clears throat> I've seen a lot, and I've seen people misuse something like this and try to go do things with it that's not biblical. So, taking this back just a half a step, make sure that what you desire, what you're believing God for, what you're asking for, what you're um, stretching out for uh, in faith is Bible-based. Amen. That God's word promises it. You know, God's word promises uh, salvation, the new birth. God's word promises healing. God's word promises prosperity. God's word promises deliverance from evil. Hello. God's word does not promise no demons in the world. You can't cast them all into the pit. Jesus didn't even do it. Have you come to cast into the pit before the time? Hello? You can't set a date and, and, and believe that you receive Jesus coming back on a certain day. It, you can't. No man knows the hour. The son doesn't even know Jesus said. So it has to be Bible-based. But what the word promises, we can have by faith, by believing we receive it, by speaking it and believing we receive it. What things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Now, Jesus put an and here and got into verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against any, that your Father also in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father, forgive, uh, which is in heaven, forgive you yours. Now, this tells us, and Galatians bears us out. For in Christ, Galatians 5, 6, I believe, says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision. What that means is, neither being a Jew or not being a Jew doesn't mean anything. Okay? It's, it's talking about the uncircumcision. It's talking about those outside the natural lineage of Judaism and those inside the natural lineage of Judaism. Okay? They don't avail to anything. But faith, which works by love, energized, empowered by love, Love is the governing factor. Now, kind of take back some things I said earlier. If you love your neighbor, you won't believe God for his wife. Hello? It's mighty quiet out there on this internet. Okay, I see a couple. Okay, I can get some thumbs up. All right. Hallelujah. Are you, amen? You see, faith works by love. Faith will wish no ill on his neighbor. So you're not going to use your faith to cause damage to others. Amen. Or transgress. And, and love also means love the Lord thy God with all the heart, thy soul, and thy strength. That means if you love God, you're not going to use, try to use your faith to do things that he, in his moral purity and holiness and righteousness and uprightness, doesn't allow Amen. So it brings us back once again. So this just bears that out. It brings us back once again that Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That our faith that we with things we desire are going to be based in the word. Then there's nothing wrong with desiring a new home. God said he'll bless you. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. He'll bless you in the country, in the field, in the storehouse, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your land. I mean, the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. I mean, God blesses your storehouses. Hallelujah. Bless, basically, he blesses your bank accounts. He accounts. He blesses you financially. That's all fine. But when you want blessing at the expense of others, then that's not faith. I remember a number of years ago, they were, they were selling this uh, multi-level marketing uh, telephone card. Actually, the guys went to jail who started it. Um, but everybody I knew was getting into it. Oh, this is God's means of prosperity. They tried that with, with that other major MLM. This is God's, God uses this to, you know, pro I get so tired of people manipulating scripture. But what they said was, they said, you know, the Bible says that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And we all need to get into this. 
Now, I, I, I questioned the person. I said, what's your break-even point? 11%. The top 11% break-even or higher. So I went and put a pyramid down. 100 people, 89 lose money. Now, if you're a Christian and you're at number 100 and you're losing money and they're telling you this is, you know, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, you're calling me a sinner. See, they're, used, they're trying to manipulate Scripture to, for personal gain. And that's not what faith does. Faith looks at the Word of God, believes the Word of God. The Word of God says, Bring the tithe into the storehouse. Approve me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not, or empty, actually, Hebrew says, empty out upon you a blessing, you'll not have room enough to receive. And somebody goes, Well, that's Old Testament scripture. Yeah, but the book of Hebrews, it's in the New Testament. We're actually, we're reading it a minute, minute ago. It says, There, talking about Jesus, he receiveth our tithe. Jesus is still receiving the tithe. Young, um, I went mind a holy grunt out here on Facebook. Um, you know, just run one up there if you can make a. And they, they need a grunt emoticon. You know, holy grunt. Hallelujah, Jason. You think you can create one? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, when you believe. The word of God says, if I tithe, he's going to bless me. And then you tithe and you say, Lord, I, I tithe according to your word. And I thank you that you opened heaven's windows and pour out blessings on me. I don't have room enough to receive. You have a right to believe that and to speak that and receive that by faith because his word said it. Healing. You know, first Peter 2, 24 says, whose own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, people always come along and look for a way to um, undermine a scriptural meaning. And one of the biggest ones is that, was, that means spiritual healing. It is being healed from the spiritual disease of sin. Barf and gag a maggot on that interpretation. Because he said, who was self, on himself, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we be in dead to sin shall live unto righteousness. And then it puts a semicolon and says, by whose stripes ye were healed. When we read Isaiah chapter 55, and then we take Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, and um, where Jesus healed the sick and cast out the demons with his word, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Pro the Isaiah, prophet uh, Isaiah. Now, King James says Isaiah, because that's the Greek form of it. Hallelujah. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Uh, he had just got through healing sick people. He didn't heal their spiritual sin, the sickness of spiritual sin. He healed their physical bodies. Amen. How do you know? Because verse 16 of that chapter says, when Eden was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. So what? The word of God tells me that healing belongs to me. I could have faith to receive physical healing and believe that it's mine. I can speak and believe and receive my healing. Hello. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> when we look in Romans chapter 4, because remember we said faith is the evidence of things hoped for. I mean, is, is the um, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. We look at Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to his end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. To that only, um, not to that only which is of the law, but to that which also is the faith of Abraham. Now he's talking about here again, getting into that circumcision, uncircumcision mindset. To the natural lineage of Abraham, the Jew, the law, or the spiritual seed of Abraham, the believers. Hallelujah. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. 
before him whom he believed, even God, listen to this, who quickeneth the dead. Now, the quickeneth is an old King James uh, Elizabethan term that meant to make alive. Okay? He quickeneth, made alive um, the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Who calleth those things which be not as though they were. For me to look at a sick body, my say my body's sick. Well, that's actually, you know, um, I, if you, I guess three going on, working on the fourth year now, uh, three and a half years ago, I had a... Um, didn't know that I was dealing with some things in my body. And, and then I, it, uh, because I had stepped on a nail and it never got healed up right, it ulcerated. Um, all the way down to the bone where the doctor, one of the doctors said that was gangrenous and they're going to have to amputate my big toe. And, um, and it was about a whole that size of my little finger right down. I mean, just cavern. And um, it, was, it was nasty. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, it's flat out nasty. And, um, you know, one of the doctors said, he, you know, well, we could, we could put you on antibiotics for a little while and, you know, um, and so forth and so on. Anyway, um, and then I, cause I told the doctor, I, the second doctor, the podiatrist, I said, doc, I'll do whatever you say to save my toe. I know, I, you know, whatever you say, I'll do it. I know how to believe God and, I, and, and what you say to do, I'll do it. And he said, okay. He gave me an opportunity. Four months later, I'm sitting in his office with my, that hole completely filled back in and new flesh and healed. And he looked at it and said, well, Mr. Taylor, I'm going to call that toe healed. And I said, and before I knew it, I came out of my mouth. I said, doc, I've been doing that for four months. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, well, whatever you were doing worked. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, uh, cause I, I asked, you know, questions about this with all the doctors and nurses over, you know, at, after this was all done. And, and every single one of them said, there was no way you were keeping your toe. It was that bad. But today I've got my toe there. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Because I called those things which be not as though they were. I called a gangrenous, ulcerated toe healed in Jesus' name. And kept my faith on it. I did what the doctor said to do. I did all the things I needed to do in the natural to care for it. But they said there was no way you were keeping that toe. He, he, I remember the podiatrist looked at me and I said, so doc, what was my situation? He said, people in your circumstance don't keep their toe. They just don't. He actually told me, he says, you need to be a case study as to why you kept your toe. That's what he told me. Well, it's, the, it's faith in the Word of God. Now, I did natural things, but it was faith. Because even in their natural things, he was saying, I wasn't going to keep that toe. Hello? I remember going to the, uh, the infectious disease guy about, about the fourth week after I'd started on you know, the antibiotics and all this kind of stuff. He said, well, he said, um, uh, it, it, it's getting better, but... Um, just be, just, just realize we're probably going to have to revisit this and then at least take off the tip of this toe. First of all, he's going to take the whole toe. Now he's got back up to the knuckle of the toe. I'm, and I walked out and said, you ain't getting none of my toe, Mr. Hacky Wacky. <laughs> You're not getting any of my toe. I didn't tell him that. And I said, you know, there's, there's sometimes you just keep your faith to you, to, between you and God. You don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to tell the, um, the, the unbelieving doctor. You just let him sit there and look at it and try to figure out what's going on. And he just kept getting better and kept getting better and kept getting better and kept getting better. And if I about a, about a month before uh, the other doctor released me, uh, the podiatrist, he finally says, well, I'm, uh, there's no more infection in this toe. I'm releasing you to the podiatrist completely. I'm not going to have anything else because there's no infection there anymore. It just needs to finish healing. Hallelujah. But I have my toe because of faith. Faith in the word of God that says, by his stripes, ye were healed. Amen. I said, amen. And I was speaking it. Hallelujah. I'll never forget, um, during that time, 
uh, there's a te there's a there's an audio series by um, Dr. Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen, um, Dad Hagen, we call him, <clears throat> and uh, on healing belongs to us. And I had it on an MP3 thing, and I had it playing, and I turned it on at night when I lay down to go to sleep. And it was like four sermons, and they play all night long, looping all night long, and it would take you know it might get through uh, one and a half, two times during the night because it's about four hours of teaching. But every night, and, and in, in one of those teachings, he had a confession. And the confession went something along this lines, you know, um, the Bible says I'm healed. And if the Bible says I'm healed, I'm healed. So body, I speak to you, line up with the word of God. Body, I call you healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh and it was a little bit long on that, but that's the synopsis of it. And I'd wake up every night. I mean, I'd, I'd be in a deep sleep. And right as he got to that part of the sermon and began, got ready to start that confession, I'd wake up wide awake, and, he's, and I'd start speaking it with him. Don't tell me your spirit is not real. My spirit man was awakening me cognitively to join in and to speak that every night. And I'll never forget as I was going to the, um, um, as this thing really started roller coastering, I was going to the um, podiatrist, and they would measure the opening and the wound. And every um, time I'd go back, it had halfened its size and kept getting at half the size and half the size in cubic centimeters, okay? We were, they were measuring at the depth, the width, the length of it. And, and every time I'd go back, you know, it was, it was like I said, you know, it was, it was, it was nasty. Um, it started going by halves. Every time I'd go back, every time I go back, every time I go back, every time I go back. And it got down to, it was just a little bitty dot <laughs> where, 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 where drainage was coming out. Um, and finally that was healed up and that was gone. Glory to God. But the reason is because I believed the word of God. I told Doc, you know how to be your doc. You, I know how you know how to do your side, and I'll do what you say. But I know how to believe God. Amen. Amen. Now, I didn't go. I bind you, doctor, in the name of Jesus. I don't. I don't receive anything you say. That's my toes not. And I, didn't, I, and listen, I didn't go. My toes not ulcerated. That's not calling those things which be not as though they were. That's calling those things which are as though they are not. My toe was ulcerated, and I was calling that which uh, uh, was not, which was healing. I was calling my healing as though it was. It, see, my healing was be not, and I was calling it as it was. And it affected my toe and the, and the tissue and the regenerative properties in my toe. And my toe was healed. Because of faith. Amen. I said because of faith. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So this is how faith works. This is how faith works. It works by believing the word of God and saying it with your mouth and calling it done, calling it into existence, making reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is nothing like a good testimony. Amen. Glory to God. But you see, the, this is an example. When we, can, when we can take things and say, you know, here, I've proven this out. I've proven out that God's word is true. I've proven out that you can believe God. And every person can do the same thing. Every believer can do the same thing. They can believe what God said is true and get their answer by believing in the heart and saying with their mouth. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to thank all of y'all for joining us tonight. Um, next week, we'll go ahead and We'll talk about Thomas's faith versus Abraham's faith. Walking by faith and not by sight. We'll get into. Uh, 
faith versus hope. Okay. And, um, and we'll go from there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's time to give. If you want to give tonight um, electronically through PayPal or through Cash App, um, you, can, you can do that electronically at this moment. Praise the Lord. And uh, that information should be coming up on your screen. There we go, online giving. And um, you, you can look at those, those tags uh, for that, their particular apps. And uh, so you'll see electronically. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, the Word of God says that uh, give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom amen and amen praise god hallelujah all right amen father we pray over the people as they give right now thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them and you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive hallelujah you cause them to walk in a delightsome land, to lend to many and not borrow as they walk in accordance with your word. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and put it in practice. As you're, as you're giving right now, say, I believe that the word of God says, given it shall be given unto me. I receive the good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over blessings of God. Now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> well, we're so happy to have had you tonight. Trust that you were ministered to and blessed by what we shared. And uh, it, it uh, added to your faith and helped you understand faith. Until next time, uh, which will be Sunday at 1230, join us live and in person over at New Life Family Church, which is where we're holding our Sunday afternoon services. We're so grateful to them for their, their um, hospitality, allowing us to use their facility uh, since we can't meet where we were. Um, but be there with us in person. Love to see you. Um, it's just good how, go how, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We need some dwelling time together. Amen? Praise God. Until we meet again, God bless you. Remember, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.